It's happened! Final Fantasy X and X2 have come to the PC. You're running out of options, Square. You're running out of games. You've got to do them soon enough. You've got to do them. Bloody do them already. Final Fantasy XII and Remaster and Crisis Core next on the list. Guarantee it's happening. Please be excited. But 10 and 10 2, bloody marvellous game. Absolutely love the pants off of both of them. That's probably already got me dislikes, but I'm going to say it loud, proud and shameless. I absolutely love both of them. Both of them in almost equal measure. So, in the spirit of it being released on Steam, I've tasked myself with answering the question of which is better. I'm going to try to be as fair and reasonably minded in my analysis here, but do forgive me if there's going to be a bit of personal opinion as a lot of these points are subjective. Let's go! The story. I'm going straight to the big one. I ain't holding back. I'm going balls deep on this and it's only fitting that I do because Final Fantasy X goes balls deep on us from the get-go. We've experienced apocalypses in Final Fantasy. We've been transported to other worlds. But how many of them have done that in the first three minutes of the game? Final Fantasy X opened with the big guns and it does not lose pace from there. From the moment Zanakind is destroyed to Tidus being transported to Spira, it is just layer after layer of plot seamlessly flowing into one another from there on out. From learning about summoners and guardians to learning about Sin to learning about the Albed and Machina to Jake Brasco and Oren's story to the Dream and the Faith and Seymour and the Guado and Unaleska and the Yevonites and the truth of the Yevon religion. It just layers it all on thick and beautifully throughout and from a plot perspective I'd go as far as to say Final Fantasy X was absolutely flawless absolutely flawless and quite possibly one of the best most consistent stories we have had and no, one of the most well developed stories we have had in the Final Fantasy franchise now I feel like an arsehole starting there and I think we all know which game is going to get the point here. But what I would say is 10-2 story was shameless fun. Shameless fun that was not intended to be taken seriously. The first 50% of the game was a casual lope through Spira experiencing multiple small stories that were detached and fractured. but. That was still a refreshing change of pace. It really was. Um, you know, having that very casual, fun, uplifted start to the game. You know, going on Yuna's journey from righteous suicidal summoner to sexy, fun-loving, independent, hot pant-wearing, gun-wielding songstress. It was just pure and shameless fun. And I understand why a lot of people might not have had the stomach for that, for that very uplifted j poppy kind of storytelling but what I would say is that Final Fantasy X 2 its story is underrated and it's underrated in the fact that for those who couldn't stomach YRP they usually never get far enough in the game to experience the entire story with you know, shooting and Len, Fegnagan with, you know, Yuna going through a bit of an identity crisis and going through some pretty dark emotions compared to what we're used to seeing with um, with Yuna, so pain and backstory with uh, Nuge and the old crew. The second half of Final Fantasy X2's story was by no means weak. It was actually pretty dark, touching and memorable. Of course, Ten gets the point here. Now, as touching as Shun and Len's story was and how it tied very nicely and how really everything in Ten Two was just a nice, 
gentle continuation of the original story. It can't hold a candle to 10 story, and it didn't try to. You know, let's be real here. 10 2, the plot point that kept you hanging on the entire game was Tidus's return. And you held on, and you held on, and it delivered beautifully. But in terms, in terms of plot, 10 steals it by quite a margin. At last, Final Fantasy Type 10 did it, the character switch out function. Why it took the franchise so long to get that function, that should have been in there from day one. You know, I should have been able to switch out Nanaki and Barrett and Tifa and Cloud and Sid and Yuffie whenever I wanted. It's the same for 8 and 9 and 6 and why it took the franchise so long to introduce that. I have no idea, but at least we got there with Final Fantasy X. And for the turn-based combat system that we had from sort of the mid-90s to the early 2000s, Final Fantasy X was the pinnacle with the character switch-out function. On top of your limit breaks, your traditional limit breaks, your summons, all neat neatly done, all very well done, and a very well evolved sphere grid. Final Fantasy X had a combat system that was on point. But 10-2's combat system, I'm going to try not to fangirl here, but I'm just going to say point blank that Final Fantasy X is the best that turn-based combat has ever been in the franchise. End of story, period. Laying that straight out there on the line. I don't know why 1992 was the last time we had job classes. I have no idea why it ended at 5 because personally I much prefer job classes to the single specified roles that we had with 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. After 15 year long years of not having job classes, 10 to brought it back. It brought it back in the most traditional of ways. With your white mages, your black mages, your dark knights, your samurai, it brought back job classes and it didn't just bring them back, it brought them back with style. Dress spheres, the dress spheres in Ten2 and the, the outfits in general looked slick, the transitioning between classes was an absolute joy to watch every time I could transition dress spheres all day long, I really could. The garment grid, the special dress spheres, everything about 10-2's combat system was absolutely on point. 10-2 wins and it doesn't just win because it brought back the old class systems, it did so much more than that. It evolved turn-based in a way that was really getting somewhere and I would really love to see Square Enix take it even further. From little things like breaking that regimented line, uh, putting the characters in more fluid, free moving positions, to interactive movements like abilities like Yuna's Trigger Happy, and even littler things like the library of funny, cool, and quirky dialogue options that they assigned to each role and each ability. And every time you switched out class figures, they added all these little quirky lines to each character, and there was such a huge library of them. All those little things, all those little details took turn-based combat to a whole new level, made it so much pacier, so much more interactive and so much more engaging. And if we see turn-based combat ever return to the Final Fantasy franchise, I really hope that Square Enix take and evolve what Ten2 started. This is the most subjective point of them all, the music. Now both Ten and Ten2 have soundtracks containing absolute gems and honestly for me this is like picking your favorite child uh, starting with the world themes both of them fit the style of spear spear perfectly in their own different ways and really it's impossible to pick um, of the two Besaid island themes for example i personally think 10 twos was much better but then on the other hand i prefer 10's carman theme over 10 twos and it's the same for character themes. Ten's Yuna theme fitted better to Ten Yuna in my mind, uh, but equally Ten Two's Riku theme fitted better to Ten Two Riku. So 
Really, the only way I can judge this is by going further to the real big biggity biggins, the real big soundtracks. Ten's prelude theme, let's start there. That was a great theme, but that then gets trumped by Ten Two's unique menu theme. Ten lashes, lashes straight back with giving every Aeon its own song of prayer, those really atmospheric song of prayers. Every Aeon had a unique theme to that, that took it to a next level. But then Ten Two tears it right back up with its combat theme. The electric guitar ripping combat theme was so much more thrilling. Uh, as too was the general boss themes. I felt that they were more detailed, more ominous in Ten Two. But Ten undoubtedly, irrefutably, has the greatest boss theme of them all. Real emotion, sticking that in there next to Trump Ten. Uh, I don't care what anyone says, it's the catchiest song in the whole bloody world. L try, try listening to it more than twice and tell me that by the end of it, it ain't stuck in your head. Um, ten Two pulls ahead, but Ten pulls it straight back again with Suki Dene. That song, that song could even make the most battle-hardened, ale-drinking, hairy, emotionally jaded Viking feel feelings. If you didn't feel feelings at that song, there is something wrong with you, you need to see a psychiatrist. Until that Viking listened to a thousand words, uh, by that point he'll be reduced to clinging to his big, hairy Viking wife and bawling like a baby. Thousand words was beautiful. Now we're at the top of the ladder now, and I bet you can feel it coming, can't you? To Zanakund. To Zanakund. Ten goes and creates an absolute masterpiece, and really the only song that could rival to Zanakund from Ten Two, in my opinion, is the song you're hearing now. Wind Crest from Ten Two is one of my utmost favourite songs, and I personally believe it is one of the most beautiful songs in the series. But the wind goes to ten. Unfortunately, wind crest. It's from the last mission, a sort of offshoot episode. So it begs the question of whether it even counts as ten two. I'm gonna go ahead and say no for the purposes of diplomacy. But I really wanted to give. I'm gonna say I really wanted to give ten two the point here. I personally prefer its OST, but with Tazanakund and Jex themes holding legendary statuses in the franchise. I've got to, I can't, in, I can't in good conscience not give 10 the win. Mini games, let's be real here, 10's mini games were designed to make you want to take a gun to your local mall and go on a mass shooting. From the Cloister of Charles trials they weren't too bad if you're a puzzle game lover, but they became damn frustrating if you weren't. To tediously catching butterflies to the most rage-inducing minigame in existence. No! 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 Go! Go! Are you kidding me? What the hell? How did it go there? Huh? No! Why'd you go around it? Uh... You're taking them all! Did you beat me this it? Go get banged. I am also convinced that at least a minimum of three suicides every year can be chalked up to failing at the 199th lightning dodge. Comparing 10's mini games to 10 2, which was mini game heaven, it's like comparing 13 snow where half the people don't mind him and the other half just find him annoying as fuck. It's like comparing that to Lightning Return Snow, where regardless of your opinion on the actual game itself, you're forced to admit they're actually awesome. Gunner's Gauntlet, that game was sick. I could play that for endless hours. Same with Spear, Spear Break? Sphere Break. Same with the Lightning Tower Recalibration. Treasure Hunts. Shootouts with Cactua. Organising monkey orgies. Then there was the Tenzu Calmlands, or what I like to call the Golden Saucer 2.0, with looping dash, sky slots, 
Reptile Run and Feed the Mankey. Tentu takes it. Tentu takes it like Shera takes abuse of Sid. While you know, Ten certainly had some entertainment value, I feel Ten definitely dropped the Blitz Ball with mini games. And speaking of Blitz Ball, you're probably wondering why I've not mentioned Blitz Ball yet, being as it's the most iconic. But I decided to save it for the end because Ten Two wins again on that front. While Ten's Blitz Ball certainly might have been more fun at first, or the first sort of hour or couple of hours was fun. It doesn't take long to figure out the AI's program is very easily abused. Unlike Tentu's more team managed style Blitzball that had infinitely more longevity and personally I just preferred it. So with over three times the number of mini games, all with much more replay value, all just much better done, much quality, Tentu is victorious. You're probably confused and wondering how world is a category when both of them are obviously set in Spira. But this is more about the exploration of Spira, the experience and the general immersion of each game. The way I look at it is Ten drew the world of Spira and Ten to coloured it in. Giving us free reign to travel freely across the world very very early on. Earlier than most Final Fantasy games, Ten to was a game that gave you free roam of pretty much the entire world and it focused on the people so more on Spira and the people and less on the actual team itself and their personal adventures and their sort of personal relationships delving deeper into the more political side of Spira you know with New Yevon and the Youth League resolving cultural disputes learning more about Ronso traditions and helping the Guado establish new leadership after Seymour basically took a fuck off shotgun to both races kneecaps uh, really meeting really meeting the Albed really meeting them seeing what they're like as actual people instead of just this voodoo race of heretics that live in a secret desert city and you don't really learn much about them and learning more about the Zanakund war Tend to breathe life into a world that was already fit as a fiddle. And that's just it. Final Fantasy X had already built Spira beautifully and it had given it so much character and depth that really everything Tentu contributed was really just a nice added bonus. That's all it really was. Tentu wasn't about fixing or improving something that was broken because nothing was really broken. And really, nothing can compare, no matter how good Tentu went at it, nothing can compare to the first time you experienced Spira. The way they created a totally unique art style and this foreign world with tons of weird cultural quirks, so much lore, so much history, so, so much substance to the world, there was so much substance to Spira and the way that it was in this foreign world and they made it even more foreign because Tidus, Tidus, we went through his sort of eyes through the whole game and he was a stranger to it all. I thought that was really clever. It was such a great method of storytelling because it also made us feel like outsiders. And we sort of learnt about Spira as Tidus learnt about Spira. So... The weird cultural quirks, things like the Summoner Guardian tradition, or sending the dead, or I know the taboo of using Machina, it laid it on very nicely and it laid it on in a very clever way, doing it from Tidus's point of view. And really, I just think that Spira in 10 was more immersive, sort of experiencing it gradually like that. You know, the best example I could give is, say, say, the Ronso. You know, in 10. You come across Gagazette and the Ronso because you're journeying through Spira. You're journeying through Spira and you come across it sort of through no choice. You have to get over the mountain. So it was a critical plot point. Whereas in 10 2, while they added a lot to sort of the Ronso tribe, you sort of just dropped in to help. 
So I didn't have that kind of immersion, that same kind of immersion and that feeling of discovery, which isn't a fault of 10.2. Of course it was never gonna have that same feeling of discovery, but that's why I've gotta give this one to Final Fantasy X. What you talking about? Sexiness is always a valid point. Always a valid point. With your brain constantly trying to analyze exactly what percentage of Yuna's cheeks that we were seeing. Riku kitted in an outfit that had thousands of people projectiles spitting their drinks over the TV the first time they saw it. And Squall Sister bringing the realization that perhaps I do have a bit of a fetish for Dominatrix after all. The crew of Tensu were a pleasant group of girls to look at, let's, let's be honest, and they were pleasant to play dress up with for 60 plus hours. Just as pleasant in fact as Lightning's sexy walk. Performing tumbles on type 0, and battling over whose perfectly sculpted arse you wanted to follow in 12. 12 had such nice asses. let's be honest. Ash, who's be who's was better? Ash, Pinello or Balfan? Fran, I meant Fran. I didn't, I wasn't just gonna say about. Ah, oh, sorry, who am I kidding? Balthier man crush for life. Ten, of course, ten cannot hope to compete. No matter how cute young Summoner Yuna was, it couldn't hope to compete. Although, there was that one scene. Oh yeah, and, and and there was also um there was also both get a point. To date there are only four FFs that have actually moved me to tears. The end of ten was one of them. I'm not even gonna try and deny that. And I'm not even gonna try to talk about it because I will start choking up like a bitch. It was just the ending of 10 was just so moving especially when you know you know when she falls through Titus and then gets up and says I love you man I'm choking up just talking about screw it I'm moving on 10-2 is right on the other side of the scale from tears of sadness in 10 to overwhelming joy in 10-2 but the feels are no less potent in either I have never been more content and happy at the end of a game than Final Fantasy X-2. It just nailed it. After all you go through to reunite Yuna and Tidus, and you know, it happens and he comes back and you know, the first thing he does is he whistles and the ship comes flying in and she jumps off the ship before it's even landed. They're running into each other's arms. The kiss, Walker shouting some banter. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I thought I could do it, but I can't. This this is worse. This is worse than picking your favourite child. This is like picking which testicle I'd rather lose. I can't do it. Both get a point. So, ten wins. Ten wins, and it's only fair that it does. The plot is simply too solid. For me to deliver any other verdict in good conscience but i'm gonna say that i really wanted to give 10 to the win i really did i prefer 10 to over 10 it is my utmost guilty pleasure probably my biggest guilty pleasure in life next to my secret love harem animes that i'm taking to the grave with me no one is ever learning about that not my girlfriend not just you just you guys you strangers across the world on the other side of this YouTube video, you guys are the only one I've shared a secret with you. And it's funny because it wasn't always that way. When I first played 10-2, I like many people, and this is why I can sympathize with people who say you know, they didn't like it. I was quite taken aback with it. When I first played 10 2, wasn't sure how to process it, but then after playing it again a couple years later, it, went, it honestly went from being the Final Fantasy I wasn't entirely keen or sure on to actually being one of my all-time favourites. <laughs> I'm going to get stones thrown at me for that. Fourth favourite to be exact. And honestly, I encourage anyone with mixed feelings or anyone who didn't complete it to go back and play it again as well. 
on Steam because it's out. Way! That's it. Take care, my dirty, disgusting, working class fellow peasants. Hit me with a like if you agree with my verdicts. If you disagree, let me know in the comment section why. But most importantly, share a moment with me to fangirl over the Final Fantasy X series. Goodbye.